I mean, over the last few years, if you go on Sydney, if you go on all the Facebook, you will hear of some people that were, you know, that were boast about, oh, you know, my this fund go up 20%, I can beat the S&P 500, you know, and uh, all that. Those are good times. What do you think of crypto? Do you have a bit of crypto in you? Or should, do you agree that person should have some crypto? Uh, I have. I do have some crypto. You have? Uh, I have. I have one. Wow. Is it a sin? No. <laughs> just, just a surprise. Yeah. Okay. I have. You see uncle doing crypto one. Yeah. I want to be cooler because uh, I have a bit of crypto for two reasons. First reason is so that I can have a communication with my son. Right. If I tell my son that crypto is a scam, he doesn't want to talk to me again. Secondly, I want to understand crypto and you understand best when you have some money in crypto. Now, the thing about crypto is that there are not enough evidence to show that it's going to give you a reliable return. Well, it seems to point to the future. It is very volatile. We know it is. Well, I'll say this, right? If you want to invest your money into important, for the purpose of very important objectives, you don't want to put into something that has not enough evidence to back it up. Right? I'll say don't use crypto as an instrument. Okay. Right, because he has not enough evidence to back it up. Mm. But you just want to buy a bit to understand, and then you are you FOMO, you know, you scared that suddenly you are wrong, or the thing really jumps sky high. You want to buy a bit just to experience it, that's fine. But please, really, really a small amount, an amount that you are able to lose. How small is small? How much? Five percent? One percent? Well, I'll say, I, okay, I, I, in the past, I used to say that it is five percent of your total portfolio. I changed my mind because 100% of your money that is meant for serious objective should not be in crypto, right? After you have put all your money, you know, enough into those serious objective that cannot fail one, and you got some spare, then I say, okay, try it out. So Christopher, do you invest in individual stocks or you only have funds? Yeah, I got, I got Singtel. That was free one they gave me. Oh, that's different. <laughs> yeah. That's different. You hold for so long now. Well, oh, that's yeah, show yeah. how old you are, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I never, it's too small to sell. Yeah. Okay, but well, joke aside, I don't buy individual stocks because I do not know which stock to buy. I have no time to go and read it. I have no time to attend AGM. When I attend AGM, when the CEO tell me how bullish the company is, I don't know whether to trust the CEO or not, right? So forget it. So I don't buy individual stocks. I uh, all my investments uh, in terms of equities is in index as well as uh, dimensional. See, I told you right. Even experts like him, uh, now his expert level is like ten times mine, right? Also, don't stock pick. Yeah, let alone all of us. I mean, I mean, if the market is going to give you enough return, I mean, there are people who say that you know. I mean, over the last few years, if you go on Sydney, if you go on all the Facebook. You will hear of some people that will, you know, that will boast about, oh, you know, my this fund go up twenty percent, I can beat the S and P five hundred, you know, and uh, all that. Those are good times. The thing is this: if you are not greedy and the market is able to give you enough returns, reliably, why take the risk to go and buy single stock when use those actively managed fund that can potentially be better? but may not be so reliable. Mm. Right? So it's all about contentment really. How to convince spouse that is investing in SG property is more risky than investing in S&P 500. Spouse is very keen to join the property craze, but I very risk averse. Divorce lah. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. The pattern divorce. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I don't know how to, how to convince your spouse. A proper, sometimes when it comes to investment, it is not just about being rational. It is about being what you are comfortable with. In truth, the S&P 500 is a lot more diversified than just buying a property, right? It's definitely the case. It should be safer. But Singaporeans have love a fair property because it's not only just tangible. I can see, I touch it, I hear people making money. But more importantly, there is that element of prestige. I can tell people that hey, I've got invested pro investment properties. If you tell people that you've got S&P 500, not cool, right? But you've got to tell people that I've got three investment properties, it sounds cool. So I understand that. That feels very good. Yeah. So I, I, I don't have an uh, answer for you because we can go on a very rational explanation to show why it is actually more dangerous. But ultimately, he has to make the choice. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have a better explanation than that.